You ready, sir? Swing it good. It will kill. The ultimate Forged in Fire matchup. You are the Forged in Fire champion. Two champion blades in a deadly weapon showdown. It will kill. 20 blades, 20 champions. You decide the winner. Forged in Fire Madness. George Washington's Kulish Mar. My name is Josh Nicolaitis. The reason why I started bladesmithing is because I was practicing a lot of survival skills and all the store-bought knives that I had just turned out to be junk, so I figured I could make my own. My friends would describe me as the goofy redneck from down the road. I would describe me as the goofy redneck down the road. The Kulish Mard was a unique dueling sword that became popular during the late 17th century and was a favorite blade style of George Washington. The weapon had an extremely broad forte, which gave the blade ample parrying strength. However, the sword rapidly tapered to a thin point, allowing for precise thrusting and stabbing attacks. An avid sword collector, George Washington even had a Kulish Mard bladed small sword at his side while swearing in as America's first president. The weapon was such an iconic part of Washington's persona, one can even be spotted alongside the first president in this iconic 1824 John Trumbull painting. Napoleon's Saber. My name is Seth Borries. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Gokche, Mississippi. I would consider myself a Bayou boy because that's all there is is Bayous and Gokche. Winning this competition would mean a great stepping stone to furthering my dream of becoming a full-time bladesmith. One of history's most ingenious military minds, Napoleon Bonaparte was France's emperor beginning in the early 1800s. Napoleon revolutionized battlefield tactics with the brilliant use of cannonade in close coordination with cavalry. His lightning-fast horsemen carried pistols and curved sabers, which delivered deadly thrusts and crippling slashes in close combat. In the pivotal Battle of Marengo, a victory that assured his political ascendance in France, Napoleon carried this gold-adorned saber. Feels real good to be back on in my normal shop. Get my thinking cap on. My biggest concern is figuring out that trifoil blade. It's definitely the most intricate sword I've ever made, but I'm confident that it, I can redneck engineer it. I'm about four inches into putting this trifold in there, and I realized that instead of wavering off back and forth, I need to just cut a small groove on the line where I need to go to help keep it where it needs to be. So now that I have a guideline cut, trifold's coming along more in a straight line like it needs to be. So far, things are going about 98% the way I intended for them to go. I am extremely happy that the blade is done. So I can focus on the guard assembly, the handle, and the pommel. So for the pommel, I'm actually using a piece of muzzle loader rifle barrel. For the handle, I'm going to use Babinga, which is like a tropical hardwood, but it's super light. Do a little work there, too. If you told me at the end of day two that I was going to be where I'm at now, I wouldn't have believed you. Day four. I'm back home at my home forge in Gokche, Mississippi, and I'm going to be working on Napoleon Sabre. I decided to go with 5160. It is a great spring steel. But I'm looking at the blade, and I think I have a little too much curvature. I was at the three inch mark, so I had to put it back in the forge and knock it down. I knocked it down a little too far. Time to go back in the forge again. It's kind of like a cat and mouse game. It's a little over an inch. Well, it's just one of those things. It's back and forth and back and forth, and I'm finally got it. It's time to move on to the heat treatment of the blade. The idea is, is to get as uh, even a uh, heat on this as uh, possible. And like Napoleon, I will divide and conquer. I don't feel no ticks. I don't feel no tings. I have a hardened blade. It's time to do a, a rough fit up of the wood part of the handle and the pommel. I look down at the floor, and I'm looking at the deer antlers that I have, and I notice the curvature in them. No one says that it has to be made out of brass, copper, or gold. As long as I hollow it out, and it has a nice taper to it, and it fits the hand, why not a deer antler? 
We got a fit. The closer and closer I get towards the final shape of it, I'm feeling it in my hand, kind of twirling it a little bit. Not quite as good as Doug Markaita will be doing, but feels good in the hand. Becoming a Forge and Fire champion would be a great way to show people that I can do this and would be one step closer for me to becoming a full-time bladesmith because this is the, the dream right here. I am done. I couldn't be happier. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Kalish Mar and deliver harassing cuts and thrusts to this big carcass. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Not really, but go ahead. All right, Josh, first up, it's got nice weight to it. Now, your handle construction. It is small enough to where I can get my hand around it, but it doesn't roll. Your edge, as you can see, is sharp. It will kill. Thanks, sir. Seth, you ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Seth, from the snotter to the trotter, every cut with this, as you can see, offers a very deep, lacerating cut. The only issue is that your blade did pick up a little bit of a bend. But overall, sir, with the way this weapon moves and feels, it will kill. Thank you very much. Good job. It's time for the strength test, our cherry wood chop. In honor of George Washington, the Kolschmar was known as a fast, light, flexible weapon. It was designed for the duel. So to test the strength of your blade, I'll be doing several tip cuts against that wood and then thrusting into it, flexing your blade in both directions. Make sure that temper's right and that that blade doesn't pick up a set. Josh, you're up first. Are you ready? Go for it. All right, Josh, there are a lot of pointy bits on this guard that don't need to be there. That really digs right into your hand. Other than that, it did well. It flexed very nicely and came back to true. So good job. Thank you. Well, bladesmiths, a saber is supposed to be a sturdy weapon. So let's see how yours hold up on our strength test. The ram skull chop. Now I'm going to take each of your sabers and with no mercy at all, bash them into this ram skull. It's not only going to test the overall strength of your knife, but the heat treat on your edge. Now, I don't really care what your swords do to the skulls. I want to see what the skulls do to your swords. Now, Seth, you're up. You ready to go? Swing it good. All right, Seth, your edge held up but we do have a bigger bend in the blade than we had before. Your guard is now mobile, and both of your bolsters came off as well. So this mechanical connection right in here failed, but the connection between your blade and your handle is still sturdy. You took some damage, but you survived. Good job. Thank you, sir. Now it's your turn. Which weapon will you choose? Forged in Fire Madness.